afternoon and welcome to the HSS Back in the Game 30 Minute Thursdays. My name is Dr. Theodore Blaine and I am an orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician for the Hospital for Special Surgery. I have been team physician for a variety of professional, collegiate, and high school sports teams, most recently for the Yale University varsity athletic teams, and I'm currently the head team physician for the Darianne and Stanford high school football teams. On behalf of the Hospital for Special Surgery, I would like to welcome you all to a great series we put together for all athletes, coaches, and parents as they address the many changes in their schedules and training due to COVID-19. I encourage you to ask many questions throughout the webinars as we would like to make this as interactive as possible. Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Sutton, an orthopedic surgeon at HSS specializing in sports medicine, and we're going to go over some exercises that you can do at home. And my name is Max, I'm an exercise physiologist at HSS, and I'm with the sport performance team. And then to get started, we'll go ahead and go to the exercises. So from here, we're going to start in our half knee hip flexor stretch. This half knee hip flexor stretch is going to be a great exercise to get, to get some mobility around the hip. So we're going to start by stacking the knee, hip, and shoulder in one straight line. We're going to brace the core, we're going to tuck the pelvis under of the sport leg, and we're going to just squeeze that glute nice and tight. We can hold this for five repetitions of five breaths or for about 10 seconds per side, okay? The next exercise is gonna be a 90-90 thoracic rotation stretch. So we're gonna lay down on our sides. We're gonna take the hips and then bend them into 90 degrees and then we're gonna keep the knees bent at a 90 degree angle. So we're gonna 90 degrees at the knees and 90 degrees at the hips. From here, you just wanna make sure that your posture is nice and tall. You're gonna take the knees, you're gonna pin them down to the ground from here, you're gonna think about opening a book. So you're gonna just open up to the side, minimizing rotation at the lumbar, focusing the rotation of the upper back, hold for about a breath or two, come back in, and then do that again. You can do this again for five to 10 reps or 10 to 20 seconds. And, you, and then you do this on, uh, on both sides. And this is a great way to kind of like open up your torso, get more mobility uh, around the thoracic spine or upper back or with athletes such as like throw in or uh, stuff like that. And then the other thing for the beginning part of these two exercises, for those of you who feel like you're on your desk a lot, if you're doing a lot of homeschooling, it's great to be stretched out in the anterior aspect of your body because we're all hunched over at our desk. So anything you can do to elongate your body, stretching out the hip flexors, your thoracic spine, we'll try to focus on that today too. Perfect. The next exercise is gonna be a uh, glute bridge. So from this one, we're gonna lay down on our backs, right? This is a great exercise to strengthen your glutes, to strengthen your hips, and as well as your core and your chain. From here, we're gonna set up by uh, placing the feet about hip width apart, and they're gonna be nice and flat on the ground. Here, before you start the movement, you wanna think about maintaining a neutral spine. You're gonna go ahead and brace your core. Now, you're gonna squeeze your glutes and then bring the hips up. You can hold for one to two seconds, go back down, Come back up, reset, come back up, or you can hold this for an isometric contraction for a time. You want to try to get this contraction, feeling it at your glutes for around 30 seconds. Okay? Then from this one, you can progress into a single leg glute bridge. So this is going to be like more isolated side, so then you can work on your asymmetries and you can also see which side may feel weaker than the other side. And then same thing on this one, you can do this for repetitions where you can either go up and down by holding for two seconds on top, or you can just hold a nice and much contraction at the top of the movement. The biggest thing here is you want to make sure that you're not arching your lower back, you're maintaining a neutral spine, engaging the core, and you're feeling this movement at the hips, okay? I like this one because it brings, as we get back to sports, a lot of your power and stability comes from your core. So the whole time I'm stabilizing my core, and my glutes, and that's what's going to be both engaging power for you guys as athletes, as well as injury prevention as we return to sports. And now we're going to move into the core. So another great way, like in order for you to, to be able to transfer power, especially with throwing, in, uh, to be able to transfer power down the kinetic chain, you have to have a strong uh, and stable core. From here, we're going to start out by going into a plank. In a plank position, you're going to lay down on your belly. You want to make sure that you're uh, elbows are right underneath your shoulders. You want to make sure that you maintain a nice, long posture, maintaining a neutral spine. From here, you're going to think about bracing the core and engaging your quads. Okay, you're going to try to hold this for a time, maybe for 10 seconds, progress to 20, and you can even progress to up to 60 seconds. If this is a little bit too hard for you, you can go down on your knees, 
So we can do a modified version. So you can start here, down on your knees, and the same thing here. You're gonna just try to focus on keeping the hips kind of like almost in line with the shoulders. We're just gonna bring this up just a tiny little bit. And then we're just gonna keep the core just nice and tight. Same thing, and then this you can also hold for either, either begin with 10 seconds and progress up to 60 seconds. So the plank as well you can do with your family. So if you have other people at home, it might be nice to challenge each other when you're doing the plank and uh, really getting everybody involved. This is sometimes, we'll do this at work at lunchtime. Just do a plank because anytime you can activate that core, it's always a good thing. The next exercise, we're gonna lay back down on the ground. We're gonna go on our sides. This is gonna be a side plank. So here, same thing. Everything's gonna be one straight line. You're gonna take your elbow, place it right underneath your shoulder, and you wanna make sure that you're not looking down towards the ground or looking down towards your feet, or having the shoulder rotate over. Everything should be uh, facing forward. You're gonna have a proud chest. Your core's gonna be engaged. You're gonna think about taking the hips up towards the ceiling. From here, you're gonna aim for this exercise from anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. If this is too hard for you, you can go back down to the ground. You can bend your knees at a 90 degree angle. And the same thing, you can come back up and then try to hold this position. Again, this is a modified and a, a, a regression to that plank position as well. In here, we can also add a bit of rotation. So in here, we can go back up to the side plank. We can take the top arm, bring it up top, and now we can rotate under and then come back out. So now we're adding a bit of rotation as your uh, field sport athlete, overhead athlete, rotation is also very important. Force maintaining stability around the lumbar spine while you're rotating is also going to be very important. Okay? Simple exercise, but you can feel that it's a good one to do. The next one, we're going to start working now on shoulder stability or rotator cuff strength. From here, we're going to lay down on our belly. So this is going to be a palm position. We're going to place our foreheads down on the mat. From here, we're gonna take our arms and then kind of like form a Y position. Here, we're gonna relax the hips, relax the belly. We're gonna take the arms, thumbs up, bring them up towards the ceiling. Think about pulling the shoulder blades down and back. We're gonna hold this position for about two to five seconds, come back down. You can do this for repetitions or you can come back up and then hold the contraction for about 10 to, 10 to 20 seconds. From here, that's a Y position. Another one here, you can go into a T position, bring the arm back down. Same thing, you go thumbs up towards the ceiling. You get a nice pinch in between the shoulder blades, thinking about keeping the shoulder blades down and back. And again, you can hold this for two to five seconds, or you can hold it for a time. The last one here is gonna be a W, right? From here, you form a W position with your arms. You're gonna take your arms, and now, same thing, you're gonna pinch your shoulder blades down and back, hold for two to five seconds, or four for 10 to 20 seconds per uh, four time. And this is really good. Again, great for our overhead athletes, our throwers. Lots of sports do involve something with your arm. So we tend to strengthen the front of our bodies, but really work on what Max is talking about, the periscapular muscles in the back. So that's a great one to do at home. Again, very simple. Take your time to do it well. The next exercise is going to be a push up, a great exercise to develop upper body strength and then great overall strength. From here, we're going to get back uh, on our bellies. You're going to make sure that your arms or your hands are right underneath your shoulders. You're maintaining a neutral spine, so a nice straight line from head down to the heels. From here, you're going to go down nice and controlled, making sure that you keep your elbows sort of like a 45 degree angle. Right? Then you're going to come back up, try to keep one straight line, and then repeat. You can do this, you can start by doing this five to 10 repetitions and then progress from there. If this is a little bit too challenging for your core, especially for your ability to maintain a neutral spine, you can go down on your knees and repeat the same uh, movement. This is just a modified regression. This is also where you can start before you go into the more advanced progression. Not only does this uh, workout, uh, this exercise work on your upper body, you're also focusing on engaging the glutes and core throughout each repetition. What are some, Max, if you were to see some bad push-up positions, what are some bad push-up positions? Some of the bad push-up positions we tend to see is when they take the arms and they kind of like form a T position. So that way, now they're coming straight out like this, they're putting tons of stress into the anterior portion of the face and, and into the shoulders. Another bad push-up position would be so don't do that. where you see excessive arch of the lower back, right? So sometimes they're not, you're not really thinking about going down into the ground. You're kind of like thinking about staying away and you're leading with your belly rather than leading with your torso. So I'd rather you get in that nice, really good plank position first. Again, 45 degrees with the arms as you go down and take your time. 
right. The next exercise is going to be a great lower body strength exercise. It's going to be we're going to go into a squat, which is an uh, exercise that every athlete should learn how to do properly. From here, we're going to start by placing our feet about shoulder, uh, about hip or shoulder width apart, making sure that the toes are pointed nice and forward. From here, we're going to think about keeping the knees away from falling into the middle. So pushing the knees out, driving the hips back, and then pushing the arms forward. From here, we're going to descend to a bottom position to where you feel comfortable and then come back up. You can hold this position, the bottom position, for about one to two seconds and then come back up with control. The biggest thing here is to make sure that you're not going down really, really fast. You want to make sure that you're controlling the movement throughout and that you are sitting back into your hips. If this is a little bit too hard for you to start, you can also utilize a chair and then think about sitting the hips back into a chair until you start to engrave that movement pattern. The thing you want to avoid here is having your knees go forward as you start to load the movement because that's gonna put more stress on the knees and the, the, the ligaments. Or you also wanna avoid having the knees fall in as you go yeah, into the movement. Okay, you also wanna make sure that you're maintaining a nice uh, toe posture and then embracing your core throughout the exercise. The next exercise is going to be a single leg balance exercise. So this is a great way to, uh, if you think of running, running happens from moving to one leg to another leg. So in here, while you're balancing on one leg, a very controlled exercise, you want to make sure that you're able to maintain partial alignment. You want to make sure that your hip stays in line. The, the knee, uh, the ankle, knee, and hip all stay in one straight line. You want to avoid having the hip go out to the side or the knee fall inwards. If we see that that's happening when you just balance on one leg, we can only, we can see what, what can happen as the movement becomes more dynamic, such as running, lunging, or even squatting. You can do this by practicing in front of a mirror. It's sort of like watching yourself, and then try to aim to get at least 30 seconds with proper alignment for yourself. The other thing that you can add is if you at home have a BOSU ball or maybe a platform that's not as steady, so sometimes there could be a foam mat that you know you might have to balance your ankle a little bit more. This is also a great way to help prevent ankle sprains too. Yep, and then just before we go to the next exercise, another way you can progress this movement, you can turn it more into like a mimicking the, the running position. So you can go into like a RDL position and then come back up. Just a more dynamic way to challenge that balance. And then just like Dr. Sutton said, you can also add uh, foam pad or a ball support into this movement as well. In here, you're also focusing on making sure that the core stays nice and engaged and that you're maintaining alignment throughout. The last series of exercises, this is because as field sports athletes, we move, uh, we move in uh, multi uh movements. We want to make sure that we're also working multiple, uh, multiple place movements. So in here, we're going to go into a lunge, okay? We're going to start by going into a reverse lunge position, okay? So from here, as uh, you're going to go ahead and step back, as you step back, you want to make sure that you try to maintain postural alignment throughout. Also, another thing, as you're stepping back, you want to make sure that you're watching where the knee is going, avoiding the, the knee cave in, and then try to maintain as much balance as possible. This is going to challenge your coordination, your balance, and your ability to have strength in a, on each side. From here, so now that we got movement in the sagittal plane, so this is movement forward and back, we can also add movement in the front plane or movement side to side. From here, we're gonna do the same. This is gonna be a lateral lunge. We're gonna do a lateral step out to the side and then come back into the center. Same thing, lateral step out to the side and then come back into the center. Same thing here, you're still focusing on maintaining postural alignment. Make sure that your knee is pointed straight forward. And as you step out to the side, your toes are also pointed straight forward. Again, I like this, as he mentioned, because a lot of our sports are not played just forward and backwards. We are going to make those side-to-side -side movements, so it's important to add that to your strength and conditioning routine, too. And the last one here is going to be a curtsy lunge. So from here, we're going to start by facing forward. We're going to take one leg off the ground, and we're going to reach back and across. Same thing, trying to maintain postural alignment, trying to make sure that the knee stays nice and forward. Again, this is going to challenge your coordination, it's going to challenge your balance, and it's going to kind of like challenge both sides of the body as well. It's a good one. I always feel like you should do that with a British accent though, with the curtsy <laughs> lunge. Definitely. And that's all good to go, guys. Um, so I'm Nick Scrignoli. I'm a primary sports medicine doctor at Chelsea Piers. Um, thanks, Karen. Thanks, Max. That was awesome. Um, 
always good to uh, have some good balance, mix of balance and body weight. I think that's great exercises. So, um, so yeah, my goal for today is to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about staying fit at home. Obviously, uh, we've all been thrown out of, thrown out of our routine at this point, and uh, it's definitely hard to stay on task and keep fit during these times. Uh, we know that exercise is a great uh, booster of the immune system. So by all means, get out there and exercise. Also, it's a great stress reliever. So, um, so we know it's important. So let's talk about a few ways we can stay safe doing that. So, uh, so I want to hit on five do's and five don'ts for at-home strength training. Um, you know, so like I said, it's really important to keep that routine. If you can put it on a calendar, um, try to have some variety in your routine. Uh, make it a combination of cardio, strength, and balance. Karen just showed us a few really great exercises for strengthening, body weight exercises, as well as balance. And so a lot of these can kind of cross over into different exercises. But the variety is how you make it fun and uh, make it effective as you get back to sport. Um, also, focusing on good nutrition. I mean, I think this is kind of a given, but uh, a lot of times even, you know, myself as an athlete, you can kind of neglect the importance of this. But uh, better fuel means better output um, and uh, really nourishing your body so you can optimize recovery is really essential for good health. Um, I put the word symmetry here. This means kind of a few different things, but... Uh, but symmetry is really important in uh, exercise. And so one thing I do like to focus on is if you're going to be exercising, um, you know, if you're strengthening your biceps, make sure you're also hitting the triceps, kind of getting those antagonist muscles, um, trying to make sure that you're uh, balancing out to your strength training um, exercises. And then also I would say, you know, really focusing on the core as this is the center of all movements. Um, and so uh, really focus on that as well. Uh, fourth thing here is warm up. So make sure you're doing a warm up. You should really start breaking a sweat before you start getting to really high velocity or high intensity activities. This will get your muscles loose and really get you warm so that you're less likely to injure yourself during your exercise. And then cool down, uh, you know, similar to that, uh, make sure you're doing a good cool down. I like to incorporate some flexibility training in my cool down. Um, we know that flexibility is a really important part of staying healthy and preventing injury. So, uh, you know, take, five or 10 minutes to really focus on a good cool down as well. So here are some don'ts uh, as far as strength training at home. So don't forget about sleep. I think uh, we've all, you know, been thrown off our typical routine, but really try to be consistent with your sleep schedule. That's going to give you really uh, the most effective uh, sleep that you can get. And so most young athletes need about eight to 12 hours of sleep. So that's a little bit different for everybody. And as you get older, you do need a little bit less sleep. But uh, really talk to your doctor or, uh, you know, talk to someone experienced about how much sleep you should be getting and try to be consistent about it. Um, so no staying up late on Instagram uh, and, you know, avoiding your sleep. Uh, also, trying to reach peak performance at this time is really not recommended um, for a couple of reasons. It's really, you know, you're not, you're not set up and you're not being coached uh, as closely during this time. So it's really not great set up for uh, reaching peak performance. Also, as we know, exercise is a great way to really boost your immune system. But if you overdo it, you can kind of overstress your body and put yourself actually at a higher risk for infection. Um, so this is a good time to maintain good health so that you can kind of get back into performance later on. Um, increasing intensity too fast. Um, also, another don't. Um, you know, the purpose of this time right now is going to be maintaining muscle mass, maintaining cardiovascular fitness, and it's really not a time to be ramping things up. But if you do start ramping things up, start slow. Make sure you're doing slow, controlled movements. If you're doing a new activity, uh, use body weight, use light weights, high reps um, as a way to avoid injury. Um, this is really not a good time to get injured. And so, uh, you know, your focus should be safety while you're doing your exercises at home. Um, and, you know, like similar to a, a swimmer wouldn't expect to be able to run a marathon without training. You shouldn't hop into a new exercise without, um, you know, easing into it. Um, the fourth point here is push through pain. So definitely don't be pushing through pain at this point. If, if something you're doing is painful, it might be a sign that you're either doing it improperly or you're not quite ready for that movement. And so reevaluate, listen to your body and just be smart at this point. Um, and then I think a lot of athletes tend to uh, forget about recovery. So really focus on a, you know, a good recovery plan and even schedule this in. You should have at least one to two days to recover each week from uh, you know, your exercises. 
This will include sleep, nutrition, um, and days off from exercise as well. So, uh, you know, it's going to be tempting to go hard during this time, but also focus on a good recovery uh, to prevent any injuries going forward. So those are my uh, main points. I guess we can uh, turn it over to Dr. Blaine for any questions that are coming through. And that was outstanding. Thank you, Dr. Sfrignoli, Dr. Sutton, and, and Max for uh, really a great uh, summary and, and great points on how to stay healthy through this difficult time. Uh, Nick, I know you said that uh, that everybody should not stay up too late on social media, so I'm going to bring that <laughs> yeah. one home to my house and see how that flies. I'm pretty sure that may not be. But a really good point. A lot of people mad about that. <laughs> what, there's one question came in about how long you should warm up. What uh, what do you recommend uh, with regard to length of the warm up? Max, if you want to take that. Yeah. So it can vary. It can be as uh, short as five minutes, but then also it, it depends on the the activity that you're going to be engaging on. If it's going to be a long activity and that it's going to require your body to take a, up a lot more beating, then maybe just warm up for a little bit longer. It also depends on how you're feeling as soon as uh, before you get ready to do that activity. If you feel a little too tight or a little bit too wound up, you may need to take a little bit more time to do more sets or more repetitions of each exercise. So just hold uh, a, a dynamic stretch for a longer period of time. So it's all in, uh, based on the individual, and it should be individualized as well. That's great, thank you. Uh, another question is, um, you know, to what degree should the exercise focus on exercises with or without weights? Uh, so I know we have another session that's coming up uh, in, our, in our webinar series talking about weight training and strength training, but maybe uh, one of you can comment on, on what portion of the, uh, of the program should involve weights or no weights. Sure, I think at this point, as Dr. Scrignoli pointed out and Max, I think we can accomplish a lot without weights right now. Um, you can actually get your body to fatigue with some of those glute bridges. And you'd be surprised some of the more advanced variations of a glute bridge and a plank that you can get to. So I would say there's a lot of great things out on the internet in terms of how you can progress with these things. But um, I think body weight exercises are pretty impressive. And then also, if you need to use weights, a lot of household items can be used as weights as well. But I'd say do things safely first, master actually the movement as well, and then you can fatigue yourself by holding things longer and doing them in an appropriate position. That's great, thank you. Uh, another question is, is uh, um, and we may not have the answer to this, but uh, when do we think team sports will be permitted uh, you know, in the environment that we live in? Does anybody have an answer? Probably not. So I've been on calls with a lot of our national governing bodies as well as with um, international governing bodies. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to em be embracing a lot of local activities. So local sports, the re-engagement of our YMCAs and recreational sports, as well as if you are working with a club team, potentially more smaller group exercises. So for example, in college, when I played lacrosse at Duke, we had individuals where there might be three of us with a coach. The other thing that's going to be really important is as you get to a field, less time chatting, less time setting up your equipment, but you're going to get to the field or the area where you're playing, go there, do your activity, and come back. So there's going to be less of a time where we're dilly-dallying doing other things. Yeah, I think uh, just to add to that, I mean, I think a lot of these are unknowns. We really don't have answers for uh, what it's quite going to look like going forward. There's going to be major changes in how team sports are played. Uh, at least for, uh, you know, the foreseeable future. But um, we're definitely hoping that, uh, you know, in the coming months, we'll be able to get athletes uh, back out on fields and, and playing. It's just That's impossible. great. Uh, so one more question. Uh, I think we have time maybe for one more. Uh, what about if you're feeling sick? So, you know, what if, uh, if you think you have COVID or think you have something else? What, uh, how do you approach exercise? and training uh, yeah. if you're not feeling perfect. So if you're not feeling uh, perfectly well, if you're feeling sick, it's better to take some time to rest. After, once you start to feel a little bit better, then you can start gradually including exercise into your uh, daily activities. But it's best to take some time to rest, especially if you're not feeling uh, well during that time. Uh, so thanks again to all of our presenters and participants, uh, and we hope to see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.